let us discuss about uh, some structure that is the but plastids so organelles found in cell that is plastids plastids are colored structure or cell organelle found in plant cells that means is found only in plant cells are called plastids so plastids are found in eukaryotic cells mainly in plant cells so these plastids found in plant cell and also in euglenoids that means in euglena we can see the chloroplast that means they are also found in euglenoids so these plastids contain pigments pigments means color structure so color pigments are colored substances are they they are called pigments based on type of pigments there are three types of plastids you can see so they are chloroplast chromoplast leucoplast so these are the three plastids found in plant cell so you know chloroplast chromoplast leucoplast chromo meaning color plastids which contain color pig color one mainly they contain pigments called carotenoids carotenoids and the pigments are nothing but carotene some red color pigment and xanthophyll somewhat yellow color pigments so you know plants can produce flowers with the different colors and these colors are mainly due to the pigments called as carotenoids and the plastids are called chromoplast plastids are called chromoplast so mainly the flower parts fruits there are different colors you can make up red orange etc all these are mainly due to pigments called carotenoid carotene as well as xanthophylls comes under carotenoids then chloro meaning green plastic which contain green color pigments that is called chlorophyll pigments they are called chloroplast chloroplast then another plastic leucoplast is nothing but colorless plastics they are mainly meant for storage of nutrients storage of nutrients so mainly nutrients are stored in roots or in a stem during modification all these nutrients are stored in leucoplast if carbohydrates are stored in leucoplast they are called amyloplast
Chloroplast has two membranes, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Between the two membranes, we can see the space also. These two membranes are separated by a space. Then within the inner membrane, a matrix or stroma is present, which contain enzymes, proteins that are necessary for photosynthesis, then also contain DNA, RNA as well as ribosomes. Apart from this, it contains as membranous sac-like structure that is called as grana or granum, singular granum, grana plural. And these thylakoids, that is, so each membrane structure is called thylakoids. So thylakoids, so membrane satellite structure called thylakoids, which contain chlorophyll pigment, which is necessary for photosynthesis. And these thylakoids are placed one above the other, like a piles of coils. Piles of coils. So like that you can make out. So each structure is called granum. So you can see many grana are present in the matrix or stroma of chloroplast. Each grana connected to the neighboring grana through a stroma lamella. The structure is called as stroma lamella. Lamella. So tibula structure. So that is called stroma lamella. Then so this is nothing but matrix, so that is present within the chloroplast. Then when you come to the functions, chloroplast may be involved in photosynthesis because of presence of enzymes and also the pigment called chlorophyll pigment. So you know plants are called autotrophs because they synthesize their own food that is nothing but carbohydrate. Our glucose synthesized during photosynthesis by using of carbon dioxide and water and in the presence of sunlight. So that means chlorophyll pigments capture the sunlight, convert carbohydrate and con convert into carbohydrate that is C6H12O6 by the use of carbon dioxide and water. So you know, carbon dioxide is available in the atmosphere, water is available in the soil, so roots absorb the water. By using these two raw materials, plants can synthesize the carbohydrate during photosynthesis. The main pigment involved in photosynthesis is called chlorophyll pigment, which is present in the membranes of thylakoid which is present in chloroplast. So that means chloroplast mainly involved in photosynthesis. So that is the structure and function of chloroplast. So this plast is found only in plant cell. It is not found in animal cell. So that is another difference. So next is cell organelle that is ribosomes. Ribosomes are non-membranous organelles. So non-membranous cell organelles found in both prokaryotic cell as well as eukaryotic cells. Ribosomes are called protein factories of the cell because ribosomes synthesize the proteins which is required to the cell. Hence, ribosomes are called protein factories of the cells. Ribosomes are made up of RNA and protein. The chemical composition, RNA and proteins, hence they are called ribonucleoprotein. Ribonucleoprotein. Then these are found in both the types of cells, eukaryotic cells and 
prokaryotic cells. In eukaryotic cells, we can see ATS type. ATS, whereas in prokaryotic cells, 70S type of ribosomes are found. Ribosomes has two subunits. One is small subunit and another one large subunit. And these two subunits are held together. So then only they show their function. Here, in case of eukaryotic cell, 70S yes, yes means Swedberg unit. Is the name of a scientist who studied and showed the size of ribosomes is mainly based on sedimentation unit or stands for sedimentation coefficient. So that means each ribosome has one larger subunit and another one smaller subunit. The largest subunit in case of eukaryotic cell 60s and smaller one 40s. Uh, the size is 80s. Not a total of this is mainly based on sedimentation coefficient. In case of prokaryotic cell, ribosomes are 70 years made up of 50 years and 30 years. So that is another one type of ribosomes found in prokaryotes. So anyway, yes stands for Swedberg unit. It's a sedimentation coefficient size mainly measured on the basis of sedimentation after centrifugation. So anyway, ribosomes are generally called as protein factories of the cell.